Hello, my young Padawan learners. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Today is the day that we put on our big boy pants. We go out and we jump on our big boy bike. We take our training wheels off and we become big boys and big girls. Today is the day that we do more proofs. More of them. More proofs. We're going to be doing so many more proofs. Proofing so many things. Proofing. Proofing. Proofing so many more things. It's going to be amazing. I'm glad you came along for the ride. Let's go. Identity checklist. Oh, this is so nice. Look at what they've done for us. They've given us a little identity checklist. And you're welcome. It says only work one side. Well, duh. Choose the more complex side. Now, I don't want to go be working on anything that's easy already, do I? <laughs> no. I want to work with the more complex side because I want to simplify it. Right? Okay. Look for algebraic manipulations, such as add your fractions. Get a common denominator to do that. Factor, multiply, all that jazz. Look for trig substitutions. For people who love lists, this is your list. Look for the basic eight. Change everything to sine and cosine. Replace squared expressions with Pythagorean identities. Keep looking at the answer. Keep referring back to the answer. Because if we don't keep looking at the answer, really, what is life? We must always look at the answer. Now, I do want to point out, changing everything to sine and cosine is kind of like a last-ditch effort. If all else fails, do that. So let's try one of these things out. See what happens, okay? Number one. One over secant squared. Or secant x. Uh-oh. It's not a squared, so I can't substitute anything in there. Plus one over one plus secant x equals negative two cotangent x or cotangent squared x. Fantastic. My pencil looks like it's wobbling. It's like a magic trick. Oh, you can't see it though, can you? Okay, enough playing around. Let's do some stuff. Let's do some pre-cal. So first things first. Uh, if I look up at my list right above, I'm not going to put it up there again because you, you can look at it. Work down, it says choose the more complex side and work with it. This is more complex. Why? Because it looks a lot more difficult than just that. So I'm going to work with this side. Look for algebraic manipulations. Add fractions, factor or multiply out. So first, algebraic stuff, algebra. I'm going to add these two fractions together. In order to do that, I my needs must has common denominators. So to find a common denominator, on this side, what is missing from this side? Well, on this side, I'm missing a 1 plus secant x. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 plus secant x and 1 plus secant x. On the other side, I'm going to multiply the top by what's missing on this side. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom here by a 1 minus secant x and a 1 minus secant x. Let's see what happens. 1 times 1 plus secant x is 1 plus secant x. Got your plus sign right here. 1 times 1 minus secant x is 1 minus secant x. All over. 1 minus secant x times 1 plus secant x. Kind of the whole point, isn't it? Getting common denominators equals negative 2 cotangent squared x. So from here, simplify down. You got a secant x and a negative secant x. Well, those will go bye-bye. 1 plus 1, well, that's a 2. Always has been, always will be. Over, and isn't this 1 minus secant squared x. Isn't that the difference of two squares formula? 1a minus b and a plus b. 
Well, fantastic. Negative 2 cotangent squared x. Now, let's compare real quick. I always want to keep looking at the answer, right? Let's compare. I've got a 2 over here. I've got a 2 over here. Fantastic. I've got a 1 minus secant squared x and a cotangent squared x. That's weird. So my 2 is probably going to stay there. Let's leave that alone for right now. 1 minus secant squared x. I know from my identities that that right there is going to be a negative tangent squared x equals negative 2 cotangent squared x. I'm getting close now. I got a negative and I got a 2. The only thing that's missing, let's say we take that negative and that 2 out of here. And I'm gonna and I rewrite that as one over ten squared x. You can probably see where this is going. One over tangent squared x, well that's cotangent squared x. Negative two cotangent squared x equals negative two cotangent squared x. Not too shabby, is it? So again, I followed my list up at the top. I had to get common denominators so I could add these fractions together. Combine everything on the top as much as possible, and this happened to end up with 2. Simplify the bottom. Flip your 1 over tangent squared, and you get cotangent squared. That's not too shabby, is it? That's none too shabby. Okay. I'm going to try and get this one in just 15 minutes if I can. Number two, go to the back. Ooh, okay, on number two, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do this one. If you look at the left-hand side and if you look at the right-hand side, what you're doing here is looking for the more complicated one. Well, they're about the same, aren't they? They're about the same. So let's say I do them both. Let's say I work out the left-hand side. Let's say I pick the left-hand side to work with. So I'm going to do uh, cosecant x minus 1 over sine x. Well, first, there's nothing to simplify because I've got a cosecant or a cosine over a sine, but I've got this minus 1 up here. So there's nothing to simplify right off the bat. So I'm sitting here thinking, hmm, gosh, there sure is nothing to simplify. Let's try some algebra. What if I split that fraction into cosine x over sine x minus 1 over sine x equals cotan x minus cosecant, oops, cscx. What if I change that fraction into being two different fractions? I can do that because algebra says I can. So let's split it. As long as they have the same denominator, I'm fine. And then what is cosine x over sine x? Well, that's cotangent x. Minus 1 over sine x, well, that's cosecant x. And what do you know? That's what I wanted the whole time. That's what I wanted. That's what I've been looking for. All right. Now, what if by chance I chose that the right side looked more complicated? Well, what you're going to see is it's pretty much this side, but in reverse. So let's say I, I chose the right side. So I'm going to start off with cosine x minus 1 over sine x. Let's say I chose the right side is the more complex. So first, Cotangent. What's cotangent? Well, let's change it to cosecant or cosine over sine, right? Over sine x minus. Well, how about cosecant? That's one over sine x. Oh, and then since these have a common denominator, well, why not just combine them into cosine x minus one? over sine x. And what do you know? That's the left-hand side of my equation. So it doesn't really matter which side I pick if they both look about the same. Now if you start, if you pick one and you start simplifying it, 
and it gives you something that is really out of this world, like kind of just outlandish, you may want to go back and pick the other side, and it may be a lot easier to do, okay? All right, let's do number three. Number three so sweet and unimposing looking. You'd never guess. One plus sine x over one plus sine or one minus sine x equals secant x plus tangent x all squared. Now, holy moly. When I ask which side looks more complex right now, I know a lot of people are going to want to default to that fraction. But look at that fraction. 1 plus sine over 1 minus sine. Is there anything at all we can do with that? There's not a thing. I can't do anything at all with that fraction. So I'm kind of stuck with having to choose the right-hand side. So I got a 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x equals 2. Now let's look at the right-hand side here. Secant x plus tangent x squared. Remember first, always do your algebra. So let's go ahead and multiply that out. Remember that secant x plus tan x times secant x plus tan x. All right, so multiply it out. Secant times secant is secant squared. Secant times tangent plus secant times tangent, outside and inside, that's going to give you a plus 2 secant x tangent x, right? That'll be 1 secant x tangent x, 1 secant x tangent x, which is 2 secant x tangent x, plus tangent squared x, tangent times tangent. Well, fantastic. Let me go ahead and write the left-hand side. Now you may be saying, but Mr. Ballard, now what? Well, there's a couple of ways to approach this. Looking at my identities, I don't really see much that I can use right now. Mainly because my secant and my, my secant squared and tangent squared, they have the same sign. There's not much I can use right now. So if all else fails, change everything to sines and cosines. That'll be 1 over cosine squared x plus 2 times 1 over cosine x times sine x over cosine x plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. If all else fails, change everything to sines and cosines. Now check that out. That middle term right there is going to be 2 sine x over cosine squared x, isn't it? If I multiply these fractions across, you got 2 times 1 times sine, it's 2 sine. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. All these fractions have the exact same denominator. 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x. So let's join them up. I've got 1 plus 2 sine x. plus sine squared x all over cosine squared x. Okay? So now I'm back to back to here. Now this one is a little bit tricky. I'm going to look back into my algebra concepts now. Okay, look into my algebras. If this was x squared plus 2x plus 1, think about that. x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'm just going to write this down briefly because I'm going to erase it in a second. Would that factor to x plus 1 and x plus 1? Well, it would. Same thing here. This is going to be 1 plus sine x and 1 plus sine x, right, over 1 minus sine squared x. Ooh, I can see where this is going. 
1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x. Check this out in the top. 1 plus sine x is here. 1 minus sine x is sort of here. So that tells me I'm going to have to cancel some stuff out. Well, look at the bottom here. Isn't this going to be 1 plus sine x times 1 plus sine x? All divided by, I've got a 1 minus sine squared. That's an a squared minus b squared. Isn't that going to be 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x? Bring down the left side. Think about that. Once I split this thing up, a whole new light bulb popped on because I've got the top and I know I'm going to have to cancel one of these out to get there. So that should tell me the bottom might factor to let me do this. And what am I left with? 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x is equal to 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x. That one took a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but that's okay. I want to walk through really quickly and just go through this step by step, show you my logic that I'm doing. First, I couldn't simplify anything straight off the bat, so I did a little algebra and squared this thing out. I came up with this. Once I got here, I changed everything to sine and cosine, and I came up with combining all my fractions and combining all my terms, I got this. Factor the top to get this, factor the bottom to get this, cancel those out, I'm left with my answer. Now here's what I would like you to do. Because we are not having class tomorrow, I'd like you to watch these videos again. I want you to go through and I want you to watch this video again. And I want you to, uh, I want you to, to go through without having to take notes this time and just watch what I do. You'd be surprised how much you can retain if you don't have to worry about taking notes. So go through once more and watch this video and we'll see you next time.